Hey everyone, Chris here from Roundtable Co-op, jumping into Pentiment for the very first time. Developed by Obsidian Entertainment, published by Xbox Game Studios, and will release on the 15th of November on the Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. So step into a living illustrated world inspired by illuminated manuscripts and printed woodcuts in a time when Europe is at a crossroads of great religious and political change. Walk in the footsteps of Andreas Mailer, a master artist who finds himself in the middle of murders, scandals and the intrigue in the Bavarian Alps. Thank you very much to Xbox ANZ for the review key. You'll see our review up on roundtablecoop.com once the embargo lifts. But for now, let's jump in to a new game. So, game uses stylized fonts and writing effects that may be difficult for some readers. The easy really read font options improve legibility by disabling some fonts and writing effects. So, I don't mind these stylized. Auto save feature, got it. Let's go. Uh, we have a rock. Oh wow. Alright, I'm gonna erase all that beautiful writing. I don't know why. Am I erasing a man? Yes. Oh, am I gonna write my own story? Is that how this works? It's, okay. I was so close to the end. Abbott said to me, I'm dress. Huh. Ah, so you can choose. I don't want you distracting the sisters in the library. I need you to finish this commission by the end of April. Keep your conversation with Brother Piero to a minimum. I don't want you distracting the sisters. Hey, <laughs> after the devil's work again, are you? Haha. <laughs> don't encourage him. Devotion to one's work and your pleasures of the mind superlative to those of the body. Uh, I'm going to find out what the kind of screen button is. I don't know. Sweet. Do you need to spend time with more exciting lovers, or I need to learn how to work the Socrates way? <laughs> how did you reply to the Abbot Andreas? I apologise and said I'd be more mindful. I said, it's not my fault that God made me this handsome. <laughs> I ignored him, which is what the comment merited. It's not my fault. <laughs> you 
joy insufferable. Alas, the Christian faith views desire less favorably than I did in my time. No. Perhaps this longing for you instilled in a great appreciation for beauty. Right, try telling it to the abbot next time, Andreas. Ha ha. Despite the abbot's eye you must endure, soon you will have finished both the abbot's work as well as your masterpiece. And then you will return to Nuremberg, where marriage and your new life as a master wait you. Can I click that? Oh! Nuremberg, a free imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire, a major trade centre and city of arts, including printing. How cool is that? Yes, married to someone he has never met. Hardly ideal. Well, the alternative is becoming a philosopher. Oh, Jesus. Then you would definitely get married. Is she pretty at least? That's what my brother said in his letter, but maybe he's just trying to lift my spirits. The small portrait they sent was lovely, but we artists can be flatterers. Oh, who knows? That's not why I'm doing it anyway. Um... Let's see. That's what my brother said. It's growing late. The wheel of time stops for no man, Andres. I fear you must leave us. Ah, uh, true, your majesty. Will you visit us again soon? Hopefully, but it's out of my control, your majesty. I don't know, your majesty. Well, I can't always know this place, your majesty. Uh, it's out of my control. As are many things. Trust in Providence. Rebian, please see Andreas safety home. Of course, your majesty. Until next time, Andreas. Until next time, Your Majesty. <laughs> hey there, mind the other fools, Andreas. I never do. <laughs> Ow! At least I would if they'd stop stepping on my feet. Watch where you're going! Haha, <laughs> they're fools, Andreas. No point in trying to teach them anything. I know old John wants you to endure the abbot's ship, but since I take you home, I get the last word. Don't let him run you ragged, boy. I won't. The abbot can't push me around. He's just trying to keep order in the abbey. I'm an outsider. It'll be fine. I don't want to cause any trouble. Right, an outsider he brought in. If he wants your work, he has to deal with you as you are. <laughs> Would you please stop? I give up. Take me home, Grobian. Ah, as you wish, Andreas. Good morning, Ursula. Good morning, to get up. Okay. The Baron, April 1518. A few more pages back to the Abbey. Okay, so we've got a journal here. Another day, another few pages for the Abbot and hopefully a few for myself. I need to get across town and head up to the Abbey so I can start work at the Scriptorium. Oh wow. So we're at the Gertner farm. Right up. People. We have Piero and Brother Piero Verona, artist of Kersal Abbey, known for his kindness and helpful nature. Brother Piero is also respected as a master painter specializing in works of extraordinary colour. Right, so we have these interaction points. We can go to bed or we can look around the picatrice P key of solomon the heptameron prior friends keeps giving me something something Let's see if i can click that and i see it's that okay this one i really should clean this up okay how do i do that or do you just look around? Let's, let's just go down. 
go in the house. Let's talk. Ursula, let's talk to you. Under pervert. Oops. Oh, I want to talk to Ursula again. Is that all we got? Yep. She's so cute. Clara and Ava. Let's go to Clara first. She doesn't look happy. Morning, Andres. Did you sleep well? Oh, she's happy. Quite well, actually, thank you. Ordinary, as far as living goes, not well. Uh, quite well. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Anyway, I know you'll be off to the Abbey, so I've packed you some food. Almonds, cheese, and some of the rye you like from the Alpenk. Actually, I wanted me to ask you to join him for dinner at the Abbey. Otto, you stop by. Yes, around dawn. Oh. Here you are, Andreas. That's too kind of you, Clara. Many thanks. Master Andreas, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, could I... I mean, could we... Would it be too much to trouble you if you paid next month's rent today? And if we raised it by two groceries? I hate to ask, but we're behind in our taxes to the Abbey, two months behind. Pete is losing his hair over it, even more than usual, I mean. Of course, it's no problem at all. Besides, we wouldn't want Peter to lose any more of his precious hair. Uh, I suppose that's not out of the question. Yes, I can manage that. I can't promise. Were these taxes unexpected? Peter says our taxes didn't go up for years, but ever since we've been married, it's just gone up and up. It used to be that if we didn't have the money, we could make payment in kind with some of our crops. The abbot stopped that last year. Now, if we don't get a good price for the miller, it's hard to give the abbey its share. I know it's not your problem, Andreas, and Peter is too proud to ask himself. Let's see, Peter. Peter's this guy. Okay. Couldn't you find it in your heart to help us out? Let's go that one. We're so grateful. Truly, Andreas, I apologise again for asking. It's just awful to be stuck in such a position. Peter works hard, but it just never seems like it's enough. St. Luke, bless you for helping us out. Christian evangelist and patron saint of artists and physicians, often represented by a winged bull. Speaking of St. Luke, how is your masterpiece coming along? It's been two months now, hasn't it? Ah, did that. Slowly, I'm afraid. Most of my days are spent doing work for the Abbey. It's only during the Divine Office that Fire Frank allows me to work on my masterpiece. A reasonable restriction, but slow going. The City Council doesn't require it to become a master. I'm making it mostly to show clients and for my own sake. And yes, when I do finish, I will go back to Nuremberg where I will marry and open a workshop of my own. From Nuremberg to a university, and now travelling the world as an artist. What a life you have ahead of you, Master Andres. Yes, I suppose it does feel like I'm starting a new chapter in my life after... ...some wandering. It must be rather frightening, starting all over again. I owe it to my family to make something of my life. This will be remembered. They helped me even after I dropped out of university. I can't let them down. I'm sure you'll make your family proud, Andreas. Anyway, I don't know anything about art, but I've seen you sketching such beautiful things in your little book. Your masterpiece must be wonderful. It is. It's my finest work. Good. It makes me glad to see some confidence in the men around here sometimes. Now I have to get back to my own work. Have a good day at the Abbey, Andreas, and we'll see you after Vespers. What's it It's Vespers. A monastic hour at dusk. One of the major prayer hours it is followed by some. Not tonight, but thank you. Now Strucker invited me over for supper. Of course. Please say hello to the duckers for us. Of course. Until later, Clara.
Okay, let's go talk to Ava. Hello, Andreas. Uh, is that it? Yep. Okay. Let's get out to the Gertner farm. Ah, there's old mate, Peter. Let's have a talk to Peter. Andreas. And I just paid your taxes. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Can we talk to this guy? Nope. Yes, we can. Morning, Andreas. This is Big Jog. Morning, Big Jog. How's it going? Are you working today? Just taking a rest for a bit. Dad's still in the field. You hit a big rock with the plow. It took me Lord knows how long to pull it out. You off to the Abbey? Every day with Sunday. Right. Thank God for Sundays. It smells like a storm's coming, no? Ha, just smells like fresh alpine to me. You've been travelling too much. Where was it you spent your wonder jar? What is that? Wandering years, during which a genuine artist or craftsman travels far and wide to improve their skills. Before you came to Tassie. Uh, uh, pick a background that will affect your character's choices going forward. Andreas knows some Italian and French and can reference cultural touchstones from Basel and nearby Bern, Zurich and Freiburg. Andreas knows some Dutch and French and can reference cultural touchstones from Antwerp, Bruges and Ghent, or Italy. Knows Italian, a little Greek, and can reference cultural touchstones from Florence, Venice and Milan. That'll be me. Italy. Florence for a while, but Venice and Milan as well. Italy? No wonder your senses are dull. You've been down there too long. Spend enough time in those mountains and you'll be able to smell a storm coming. How long will that take? Hmm, 10, 15 years? I don't think I have that long, Big York. What did you spend all that time in Italy doing anyway? Other than art, I mean. Okay. A hedonist. Andreas seeks out pleasure wherever he goes. He is extremely social and quite experienced in all the enjoyable vices of the world. Craftsman. Bookworm. Rapscallion has a pension for getting involved in petty schemes, pranks, minor crimes, and fistfights, or a businessman. So it's much too tied to self-promotion, optimizing business expenses, making investments, and balancing his books. That's me. Learning how to run a business. The art will come with time, but how to manage finances, deal with clients? I have to secure my place in the world when I become a master. That's going to come from coin. You're a smart man, Andreas. Wish I could say anyone in my family knew anything about business. Most years, we barely have enough to get by. The peasant's lot, I suppose. Anyway, I have to get going. Sure, let's go. Dad's already acting like I'm ta talking too long, even though I did all the work to get that rock out. See you later, Andreas. I'll see you later. Alright, so we've got Big Jorg, we've got Peter, and we have Ill Peter. Bless, God bless you. Ah, Andreas. Uh, oh, yes, Andreas. This weather's been uh, god awful. This town's gone to shit since my days. I don't think the townsfolk can do much about the weather. Were things different when you were young? As different as beer and piss. The old abbot didn't bother us much about our customers. He didn't mind if we left a little offering to perch to keep the skies clear. The weather fair. Matthias knew that God, Christ, was in our hearts, even if the white lady's name was on our lips. The church banned all observances of pagan gods, Ill Peter. All sort of old customs. I thought St. Moritz protected Tassin. Do you think that spirits have been fouling the weather since no one follows the customs anymore? Uh, St. Moritz. Yes, and St. Satya too. But who do you think protected it before they came along? Saints weren't the first to watch over Tassin. My father knew that. Old Renning Kemper knew that. That bastard Abbot may not like it, but some of us keep the tradition alive. 
like the old widow Atelier. Yes, yes, she always hangs the door frame with lavender to keep the spirits out. Even if it doesn't help with the spirits, it does smell nice. I suppose. I just know it helps with ghosts and witches and whatnot. Cough, cough, spell bearer. That's so cool how it fixes the spilling. That should go. Mm, Alright, God bless you. Alright, so we've got a map here. And we're at the farm. John Bauer Farm. So what's our... Okay, that's my background. My journal. I need to get across town and head up to the Abbey so I can start work at the Scriptorium. Okay, so where's the Abbey? To Abbey. Alright. So, we might as well go to John Bauer Farm. Let's go this way. Can I go that way? I can't go that way. I have to go this way. Alright. So we got Endress. Might as well talk to him. Hello, Andres. Well, he doesn't want to talk. We have... Endress Schmidt Smithy. It's so much smaller than the one he used at the Abbey. Okay, nothing over that way. Keep coming. Oh, look out. What have we got here? We got Martin. What? Heady? What would Heady like? Ah, oh, I have to follow the path. Okay. <laughs> Martin, please, can you give me a hand here? What do you want? I'm keeping an eye on them. That looks a lot like standing there and doing nothing. Martin? For Christ's sake, help your cousin. Ah, oh, morning, Andreas. Excuse us. One of the fence rails fell off and the sheep started hopping it. Um, is there something I can do to help? Have you ever handled sheep before? Um, no. Then no. But thank you. Christian of you to offer. Oh look, there's something going on up the Steinhaus place. I love the art. Pretty awesome. Who is that on the horse? Looks rich. I don't know Martin, but Lucky is giving him an earful. Christ, I haven't seen Lucky that worked up since Peter and Clara's wedding when Johan pulled his pants down. <laughs> Not two of my mom's teeth out. You don't want to feel the strength behind a stone mason's anger. Do you think he's a noble? He looks really rich. God damn it, Martin, stay out of trouble for once. What, Aunt Hetty? Ave yourselves. Don't we have enough to do, deal with right now? Andreas, you wouldn't mind moving your skinny little dotty up the road. We need to get these sheep under control. Of course. See you later. Don't work too hard, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the humour in this already. Church and Druckers. Got the trucker house, which is locked, and whoa. Morning, Andreas. How's it going? Morning, Klaus. Another day at the Abbey, another few hours to work in my masterpiece. Good to hear. You still coming by for supper tonight? Marie and Bert would love to see you. You really need to see these new woodcuts I have for an Italian edition of Till Ol Spiegel, the titular character of a popular 15th century book. Till is a prankster, continually exposing the vices and hypocrisy of others. He is also quite skilled at tricking people into smelling, touching, or eating his excrement. Yeah. I didn't realise Father Thomas let you print books in Italian. Come on, Andreas, he's not that strict. I know he's just trying to protect people from... adventurous stories of questionable moral disrepute? He doesn't mind those so much, actually. No? As long as I don't get too carnal. 
Oh. So, something like that, this. Of course, thank you. Great. I'll tell Marie and Bert you're coming. See you then. See you later. Uh, Alright, who we got here? Thomas. God bless Master Mailer. I hope your week is going well. Thank you, Father. It's going quite well. I'm just on the way up the hill to get to work. Good, good, Andreas. I don't recall seeing you at Sunday morning Mass. You understand how important it is for your salvation that you receive Holy Communion, don't you? I do, yeah. Yes, I apologise, Father. I promise I'll make it to Sunday. Uh, I just stayed up to... You don't have to make a promise to me, but our salvation is contingent on the... Oh my, what a blessed day to receive such an illustrious visitor. Master Mayor, this is Lawrence, Baron of Rothwegel, a great lord from the countryside near Worms. Prosperous, imperial free city in the western part of the empire. Located on the Rhine River, Worms has been the site of many imperial diets. See you, Father Thomas. It is nice to be remembered fondly. I only wish all of your neighbours were here as welcoming. Well, worried about me. Well, yes. What brings you back to our little town? My wife and I were returning from a trip to Venice. We spent a few days in Innsbruck and it was terribly dull. I mean, it has a certain charm common to these Alpine cities, but the place was crawling with nobles for the Emperor's diet. Diet? An imperial diet is an assembly of three colleges of the imperial estates of the Holy Roman Empire. Prince electors, princes and dukes, representatives of the imperial cities. They meet to deliberate on matters of importance to the empire. Ah, and then I was thinking emperor's diet is in what he eats. The emperor? Was he there? Did you see him? Oh, briefly, but he was sitting for a portrait at the time. Quite lovely. I didn't want to bother him or the painter. That was Venice, my lord. I lived there only a few years ago. Oh, fascinating. Well, the city's Jews now live in their own quarter in the north. The city's artists are still producing wonderful work. Titian, in particular, is a god. No offence, father. Of course. Anyway, my wife wanted to stay a bit longer in Innsbruck, and I decided to write ahead of a visit to Curacao. I heard Father Matthias died shortly after my last visit of of course. Abbot of Curacao before Father Gernot, widely respected by the monks and nuns as well as people of Tassic, known for his kindness and his love of books. A great loss for the Abbey and for us all. Indeed, by good fortune I recently came across a copy of the Historia Tassiae he was reading during my last visit. An account of the early history of Tassing, Casal's previous abbot, Father Matthias, had a copy. Baron Rothwogen bought another to the Abbey as a gift. Father Matthias was hoping to find a second copy to corroborate the contents of the first. It contains some fascinating details about the history of this place. I'm afraid they might even cause a bit of a scandal. <laughs> ah, yes, hmm. But it must be off. There will be time enough to discuss Tassing's past later. I commissioned a manuscript from the Abbey through Father Gano, and I have come to check on its progress. Oh my lord, if you have come to see your manuscript, you should speak with young Master Mailer here. It is an honour to meet you, my lord. Andreas is a genuine artist from Nuremberg. For the next few months, he's also helping in the Abbey's scriptorium. A Nuremberg artist working in an Oibo scriptorium in, 18, in 1518? Oh, we should take pork, Andreas. I must know the story. Of course, my lord, it'll be an honour. Wonderful. It's so rare to find someone in the countryside who knows anything about art. Thank you for the introduction, Father Thomas. Come to supper at the Abbey tonight. I'm inviting you to the Abbot's table. Oh man, I've already got dinner plans. Is the abbot invite me? Oh, don't worry about it, father. Just show up after Vespers. What is he going to do? Refuse us? What's Vespers again? 
and monastic at uh, at dusk. One of the major ma major prayer hours is followed by supper. Okay. Hey. Excellent. We'll see you then. McLeod, so I'm dismounting. Run ahead of us and take the horses to the Abbey's guest house. I'd like to take my time walking with Master Hela. Corp, I'll meet you there. Once, my lord. So then, a gentleman from Nuremberg. Ah, oh, I've done that already. Sorry. Forgive me for saying so, but you seem a little old to not yet be a master. Are you unmarried? No, I'm not married, but in truth, I came to my vocation later than my father and brothers. I was in university for a number of years at Erfurt. Erfurt, wonderful. The same university as Martin Luther. Have you read his works? Tremendous mind. Priest and professor of theology at the University of Wittenberg, controversial for his opinions on the church's sale of indulgences to forgive sin, which were recently published and distributed throughout the empire. He says things about the church that should have been said years ago. Might get him into trouble, but he's a brave, brilliant man. Wait, you may have even met him. Did you? You must tell me. Ah, no, he was a few years ahead of me. Still, his ideas do seem fascinating. I agree wholeheartedly. I simply must meet him if I get the chance. I wonder if the good brothers of the Abbey have heard of him. Perhaps they have even read his list of 95 things against the church. A list of propositions against the church's practice of selling indulgences for the remission of sin. It was written in 1517 by Martin Luther. Father Matthias was not above having a lively debate. I hope Father Gounod does not disappoint in that regard. But enough about Luther for now. Tell me about your university studies. Forgive me, Bam, but did you attend university? You seem very well educated. Ah, no, my family is merely wealthy enough to have provided me with all of the... the... books. Ah, <laughs> I was like, box, box, books, and tutors a child could dream of. I love all knowledge from Aristotle and is it Cicero or Ticero? Let's see, Cicero, statesman, scholar, lawyer, and renowned orator of the late Roman Republic. He is revered both for his contributions to Latin literature and his skill at rhetoric. And everyone in between, and yet to come. I may have misjudged the book, the Baron. It's I keep reading it, but it is. It is it seems he is as well read as any university student. In truth, I am simply happy to speak with another well-educated man. Now then, did you earn your doctorate? I no, I didn't. Only a master's degree. I started working toward a doctorate, but didn't finish. Oh, that's a shame. Well, what was your area of study? So we had theology, imperial law. There's the basics of the fractured systems of laws that govern the various states of the whole of uh, medicine. All things medical. Studying the latest and greatest texts coming out of Italy. Yes, the Italians continue to innovate in that area. Extraordinary, really. Fascinating work. Who knows what secrets we may learn about the human body in decades to come. You. If I had any faith, I would have prayed you'd never show your face around here again. Curse you, Lawrence Rothwagel. Approached as dogs tearing you to pieces would be too kind of fate. Hmm, huh, rude. These rustic communities display a shocking lack of hospitality, don't you think? Oh, what was that about? Who knows? By the time I finish guessing, the old crane will probably be dead. Okay. Well, what of your early time in university? Every student must study in the trivium and quadrivium, yes? Do you have a favourite subject? Uh, a Latinist, a logician, an orator, oculist, heavens and earth. Uh, yeah, that'll do. I love studying the natural world, my lord, both the heavens above and the wild spaces around us. Formerly, I studied as much astronomy as I could. It's incredible how much we've learned from both the Arabs and the Greeks. 
true that even now we continue to discover more about what we can see within the celestial sphere. What began as pagan myths to explain our place in the world may help us understand our place in the heavens. And this may seem foolish, but I spent a lot of time in the wilderness learning about plants and animals. Really? Did the libraries of Earth not have enough herbals to satisfy your curiosity? I don't mean to malign our most august Greek and Roman authors, but the Materia Medicine was written before the coming of Christ. Medica. A pharmacopoeia, or book of creating compound medicines, written by Pedanius Dioscorides, a Greek physician and botanist who was employed in the Roman army. The five-volume text has been a primary source of botanical information for centuries. It was written before the coming of Christ. Surely there is more than more, more that we can learn about plants, insects, and animals by observing them in nature. And beyond that, I simply have a love for wild places. While I do not share your academic interest in nature, I must admit that I sometimes enjoy the solitude of a walk in the woods. And your other studies, were there anything else you excelled at? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Occult, occultist. I used my access to the university's library to pursue more esoteric interests. Oh, esoteric how? Mystical texts, books on alchemy, invoking spirits, divination, purely academic, of course. Of course. I started with Fasino's Corpus Hermetic Hermeticum, and my interests only deepened from there. Corpus Hermeticum. A compilation of 17 religious and philosophical treatises encompassing the sot soteriology of Hermes. This is huge. Of thrice great Hermes, the centuries old texts reflect Egyptian, Greek, and Jewish traditions and ideas and were translated into Latin in the late 15th century by Marsilio Ficino and Lodovico Lazzarelli. Wowzers. Quite interesting, Andres. So I'll make some time to speak with you more on this topic during my stay. I look forward to my, oh, as you wish, my lord. Ah, oh, there's the Abbey. I have good memories of this place and of Father Matthias. I was sad to hear of his passing. How did you come to know him? How did you know come to know of Kiyosau at all? My family have been patrons of Kiyosau for I don't oh I don't know how many generations. Some years ago, I heard that Kiyosau still had a wonderful library and artists. Professional artists have taken over most manuscript productions, so I was shocked to find an active scriptorium here. Um, well, there's not much left of it these days. Two old men, a young scribe, and me. Ah, well, perhaps it is nostalgia that brings me back here. I commissioned a manuscript through Father Ganoa a year ago. I thought I would stop by and check on the progress. Wait, are the artists working on it? It's a prayer book with 20 illustrations. I know the work, but no. I do know the art as well, the venerable brother Piero. How venerable? He still has his wits and his skills, if that's what concerns you. Brother Piero has an incredible talent with colour. Then I very much look forward to seeing it. Cloud, tend to the horses and the baggage. I'm heading up to the abbey. Yes, my lord. Well, let's not keep the abbot waiting any longer. Nuns. Quite unusual for a Benedictine house. Bened an Edictine house to have monks and nuns, even if they are separated. Founded in the 6th century, the Benedictines are a Christian monastic order that observes vows of obedience, poverty and chastity, and stability under the rule of Saint Benedict of Nursia. The church closed most of them centuries ago, but then Kiosau is a place not of time, in out of time, in more ways than one. Uh, do you know Mother Cecilia? She seemed to recognise me. We are acquainted, yes. Let's leave it at that. Mm. Uh, 
Ah, you must be Father Gano. I'm Lawrence, Baron of... Yes, the Baron of Rothwell. So, wonderful to have you here again. We actually did meet you on your last visit. Ah, if you say so. I'm not good with remembering faces. Please forgive me, my lord, but I wasn't expecting you for another few days. Yes, I know, but I rode ahead. I just couldn't wait to see my manuscript. I'm sure it's no trouble. Well, uh, yes, I mean, no, it's no trouble. Did you want to see it now? Oh, in a moment. I could do with a bit of refreshment, though. May I grab something from the kitchen? Yes, yes, certainly, my lord. I will meet you there. Andreas, I don't know what you're doing with the Baron, but I need you in the scriptorium now. Of course, father. I'm eager to get to work. Then get to work. <coughs> Shit. I should have asked him about an advance for the Gertner's taxes. Ah, oh, I saw that there. Maybe I could just convince Father Mattel to pay me early. Let's try. Alright, find a way to get paid. We've got the shrine. Ah, uh, let's get to work, I think. So we have Monastery Loquarium. God bless you, Andreas. Has your voice yet recovered from Eastern Mass, Rudiger? Oh yes, it was a bit of a strain, but a worthy sacrifice. Well, if the Lord could give us his all on Easter, exactly. Have a good day in the scriptorium. Have a good day singing. Agnus Rebenit Oves Christus Innocens What's my... Oops. Nothing here? No. Oh, could I have rung them? I don't know. Uh, journal. Advance. Okay. Right. God bless you, Andreas. How was the sacristy today, Mathau? Same as yesterday. Does my vocation seem silly to you, Master Mother? I was just being friendly. Then go in peace, friend, knowing that the Abbey's treasures are secure for another day. God be with you. One more thing, I have a favour to ask you. Yes, Andreas? I was hoping you can give me my pay for the latest manuscript early. This isn't part of the agreement you made with the Father Gano. You'll be paid on the completion of each additional manuscript you illuminate, not before. I only have a few pages left, Brother Mattel. I will finish them in the next few days anyway. Then I think you can wait a few days to collect your wages. This abbey runs through mutual agreements, not haphazard payments. Breaking such contracts would cause undue trouble not only for Curacao, but for Tassie as well. Is that why Father Abbott has increased the taxes on the Gertners? What is this about, Andreas? Gertners have asked me for their rent early so they can pay their taxes to the Abbey. See, very well. Do not ask this of me again, Andreas. Well, did he pay me or not? Here you are. Oh, wow. I shall note this with Father Gano and Briar Ferenc. Thank you, brother of that. Hmm. God bless you, Andreas. Well, I was truthful. Alright, now that I've got my payment, I can give Clara the rent early. Uh, I'll give it to her directly to make sure she receives it. Okay, so. Uh -huh. I managed to convince Brother Mathau to pay me early for my manuscript. Luckily, I didn't need to convince the abbot. I should get the money to Clara. 
Do I need to do any work? I feel like I should be working. Now is it the lower abbey? Come on, wait, let's check. Um, I objective. I have to get the scriptorium. Oh dear. Fire's house. So to get to the scriptorium, I need to go this way. Why do I want to get to the scriptorium? What's close to me? Oh. Infirmary, monastery. I'm going that way. Large garden. Oh, I am going the right way. Okay, let's check down this way. Courtyard. Oh, Sabat. I'd give you health, Master Mela. Brother Sabat, I'm surprised to see you still here. As am I, but I'll be leaving soon, returning to Rome. I and my bishop regret that we could not reciprocate Father Rudolph's generosity earlier. He showed much kindness to our priest at the Council of Constance many, many years ago. Will you remain in Rome? That is up to my bishop, but I will miss these mountains in any case. You should travel to Ethiopia, Master Mona, and see the highlands. God has blessed my home with a wondrous beauty. I would love to someday. I still need to return to Nuremberg and open my workshop. Yes, someday. Until then, if you are ever in Rome, I may still be around. I've only made it as far south as Florence, but I'd like to see Rome. By the way, if you have some time in the next few days, it would be nice to share a meal with you and some of the townsfolk. The townsfolk? I am accustomed to strange looks, especially in rural places like these, but I have had kind words with the baker and his wife. Oh yes, the Albans, all Rick and Gret. I offered to tell a story to the children and their mothers over a meal some day. Gret seemed excited about the idea, but I'll be more comfortable if you were there as well. I can certainly make fun. Thank you, Andreas, I look forward to it. God give you help. Church, dormitory, cemetery. Let's go, I think it's the old Bailey, isn't it? <clears throat> yes. Alright, we're going to the scriptorium. Guy, a doc. What's my mission here? I'll talk to these guys, I guess. What do we keep walking? Piero. Oh, looking very dirty. Okay, well, let's talk to these guys. Andreas, God bless you. So good to see you. Good morning, Brother Piero. Good to see you as well. I don't like this weather. My bones ache. It means a storm is coming. Big Yord Gertner says that if you live here 10 or 15 years, you can smell storms coming. Brother Adok has been here long enough that we can always smell him coming. Do not forget, Brother Guy, the fate of the youths who jeered the aged prophet Elijah outside of Bethel. Are you comparing yourself to a prophet, Brother Adok? I am comparing you to an impotent youth whom the Lord, in his ineffable wisdom, may choose to strike down. Stay out of this, Andreas. The old fire can defend himself well enough. I need no defense against the likes of you. God protects his faithful against the iniquitous. Well, everyone seems quite lively. I suppose that means Prior Ferenc is not overseeing us today. 
he was here, but then he heard Lorenz Rothbergel had arrived, and he hurried out like a little mouse. Frank is so desperate to impress the abbot and nobles like Rothbergel. It's pathetic. You feign kindness to Father Abbot and our prior only to speak about them like this behind their backs. It's shameful. Oh, I know. Baron Rothvogel, this manuscript. I just realised that he will want to see his manuscript. How silly of me. Of course that's why he's visiting. Perhaps if you were younger and faster, you wouldn't need to worry so much about patrons' visits. What's the problem? The Baron is just one client. He has to wait like everyone else. Andreas, Baron Rothvogel is not like anyone else. He has powerful friends, including the Prince Bishop of Frieging, religious and secular ruler of scattered territories in the Holy Roman Empire, including the lands containing Tassing and Kursau. Kursau is already out of favour. Father Abbot does not want to have to deal with more attention. Well, if Prior Frank isn't here, I'm going to work on my masterpiece until he arrives. Oh, that's right. I need to reference the end of our manuscript. What do you want, Andreas? A book. The end of our manuscript. The book of hours. Your hair looks messy today. Did you get enough sleep? What do you mean? I mean, did you sleep alone? Or why do you want to know? It would be nice to have something to think about during Divine Reading. Have you considered the Lord? You really are a cloud on a sunny day, Andreas. Can I just get the book? Ugh, that's all the way up the top. That's all that way upstairs. Can't you get by without it? I'm sorry, but I really can't. I needed a reference for my work. Really? My feet hurt and the stairs are so steep. I'm just going to ask Illuminata to get it. Sister Illuminata! Andreas needs a book and he's being inappropriate with me. Hey! Andreas? I wasn't being inappropriate with her. I didn't think that you were. Sister Edina has a poor attitude toward her vocation, the rule, and I suppose, the Ten Commandments. She may yet come around. That's charitable of you, but perhaps you are right. I should not have been so quick to judge her. In any case, I overheard you requesting the Endemer manuscript. Here, please, return it promptly. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Andreas, may I see how your masterpiece is coming? Of course. Your opinion is always welcome. Yes, the composition is lovely. There is a joyful spirit in your arrangement of the figures. The contrast of colours is also quite nice. Rich and beautiful on their own, but not overpowering the scene. Hmm, is that all? It's an excellent interpretation of someone else's work. Hey, what do you mean? It's all my work. My son, you're copying the illustration from the end of manuscript almost exactly. So, what's wrong with that? Haven't I improved on it? Aesthetically, yes, it's wonderful. But I feel you have not given much thought to what it represents. It's November. In November, we show peasants leading the pigs into the forest to forage on acorns before the slaughter. Andreas, the peasants here are no longer allowed to forage acorns in the forest. Many great lords and abbots across the empire have forbidden it, even Father Cano. What difference does it make? This is the way November is painted. But it is not the way November is. Art is illusion, storytelling, but in their most sublime form, these images illuminate a path to truth. It's most important to me that my clients are happy they won't pay me for the truth. This masterpiece is a way for me to impress patrons. I can't be concerned with anything else. Mm. Clients are happy. 
Yes, but with God's grace, this book of ours will outlive us all. What will it say to those who see it in a future generation, centuries beyond our comprehension? Some will gaze deep into your lines and paint to seek a deeper meaning. What will they find? But you need not listen to my opinions. They are just the thoughts of one old monk. There is no place for the monastic scriptoria anymore. In truth, this room is a place out of time. Uh, does that make you sad? I admit I am still fond of the old styles of littering and illumination, but even in my youth I knew it could not last. The creation of books of art is no longer the province of monasteries. So be it. More people will be able to write, more will be able to read, and in doing so, be brought to truth. I think there will always be a place for artists like you and Brother Adolf. And Brother Guy. It's kind of you to say so, Andreas, but you need not be concerned for me. I have lived a long life and I'm happy to have served the Lord. When, the, when he calls me, I am ready. gone it's all already terse monastic hour corresponding to 9 a.m one of the little hours of prayer terse precedes mass and the chapter meeting too much talk i must ask forgiveness for not honoring the rule until later andreas until later oops this hmm what's going on in here let's go talk to the lady Andreas, what was that noise? Oh, I'm sorry, it's just the Illuminata. I knocked a bowl of paint to the floor. But then Prior Frank came in, wrote in one of his books, stayed at clothes and left. He was in such a hurry, I don't think he even noticed me. It, he was slaying books shut? Prior Frank should know better than that. Some of those manuscripts are quite delicate. He seemed to be in a great hurry. I think he is on edge since Baron Rothvogel arrived early which is why books should not be taken out of the library unless it's necessary for divine reading or work in scriptorium. Are you still mad at me for borrowing the Chronica Clara? No, anger is not an appropriate response for a, mm, for a nun, sorry. But the fact remains that you tricked me into giving you that book for no valid reason. You sound angry. You should not interpret my disappointment as anger. You should also understand where it is directed. It is ultimately my fault, but it's my responsibility to be more vigilant about what books you can take from the library. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait, what's all this fuss about Lorenz Rothwogel? Why is the prior Frank so nervous? Lorenz? I didn't know you were familiar enough with the man to use his Christian name. Anyway, I haven't dealt with him personally, but the prior and father Abbot have. I only know that he's purchased a number of our most valuable manuscripts over the years. He paid enough to help the Abbey when needed it. Like what? What did he buy? Hmm, I can't remember. You know, I have my own responsibilities to attend to. How about this, Andreas? If you help me recover some missing books, I'll tell you what I know about the Baron. Of course. I'll help in any way I can. Thank you. It's for the good of the Abbey. Where should I begin? Out there, where you are, you and your cohort have carelessly strewn books around the scriptorium. I will tell you what books I'm looking for, find them, and return them to me. The first books are two volumes of Alanade, or Aenade. 
poetic epic telling the legend of Ananus, a heroic Trojan who struggles to reconcile his personal desire to his destiny to found Rome. It was written in the 1st century BC by the Roman poet Virgil. A reddish covers, 14 inches by 10 inches, 3 inches thick. Oh, I know the ones. They're among Hero's favourites. He keeps them by my desk. They are not his to keep. Aha. Uh it's -huh. a fair amount of water on these. I hope you don't mind. These volumes were old even when Piero started to make the copies. How long ago was that? Three years. The a and is not one of my favourite stories, but I understand why it appears to Piero. Aeneas chose his duty to the gods over his lover Dido. Do you think Aeneas' sense of duty appeals to Piero? We all have our vocations. Brother Piero takes his more seriously than most of the others in the Abbey. You clearly take your chosen vocation seriously. Andreas, I didn't have a choice in my vocation. You women do. You're right, of course. I appreciate that you understand how limited our roles and our choices truly are. Even in stories, we are maidens to be rescued and wed, cruel seducers of men or wiser crones. Like Dido, we ordinary women are merely tools in the tales of men. We can never be the protagonists of our own stories. No woman is exempt from that, from the empress to a man, none. It is our lot. I suppose I understand now why you are not fond of the A&E. It's fine poetry for men. Now, the books, if you please. Thank you. Next, Wretched Quarren. This is a printed copy, green cover, diamond pattern. I do not have the size in the ledger, but hopefully the description is enough. I know the one you're talking about. Brother Adolf was reading it. The beauty of this book truly belies its ridiculous content. I'm surprised the Abbey owns a copy. We don't. It belongs to Amade Rusco of Lugano. It's a Venetian edition that's quite valuable. He loaned it to us five years ago. It was subsequently lost and the Abbot has received three letters about it. That book is not appropriate reading for Benedictine monks. A baby is sold to pirates, raised to servant, and lives a life of adventure wooing princesses and fighting in tournaments. You've got the best part. In the end, Guerin learns he has royal blood, the son of a duke. He reigns as a king and dies a pious hermit. What's not to love? Benedictine should be dreaming of reconciliation with our lord, not lusty adventures. I suppose you're right. It's better suited for knaves like me. It's not my place to recommend anyone for reading stories, least of all you, Andreas. Still, we must be on guard. Fantasy leads to temptation. Temptation has led to the downfall of many men and women. Sometimes, yes, but books like this, it's all the same kind of fantasy, isn't it? To die better than we were born. And what's the problem with that? Why shouldn't a peasant dream of being a king? There is neither... Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all in one Christ Jesus. You may be in one Christ, but we are not equal in this world. It isn't this world you should be concerned with, Andreas. But the book, Andreas, we must return it. Or, would you like the abbot to receive a fourth letter? I hate to see the brothers disappointed, I understand. It's not my goal to deprive the brothers of their joy, but to return Medea Risco's property. The book, please. There's only one book left, then you'll be freed from bondage. A dark red cover, 8 inches high, 5 inches across, 2 inches thick. Oh, I remember that. I believe Brother Guy was reading it.
Now that I think about it, Guy has always been guarded about this book, like he was hiding it. Very good. Please bring it here. What is this, anyway? Huh, maybe I should have learned French at some point. What is this? Why are you asking so many questions? Just give it to me. Why won't you tell me what this book is? Because it's a dangerous book, Andreas Mailer. One the previous abbot tolerated in spite of a papal order to destroy it. Three French bishops condemned the book. All copies were to be burned. Its author shared the same fate. What? Why? I don't know, Andreas. It isn't my place to question the judgment of one bishop, much less three. And before you ask, no, I haven't read it. But I know it contains a dialogue between love and reason. So the book is dangerous. When did the bishops condemn it? hundred years ago. What? Why? Why is it still here? Because Father Matthias loved books. All books. He didn't want to see it destroyed. I can sympathise with him. It's fine, but Father Matthias is gone. Not my place to question the former abbot's decision, but when Father Gerno learned it was in our position, he wanted it destroyed. Must the book be destroyed? No one ever knows that it's here. I do. So do Mother Cecilia and Father Cano. Fine. Take it. Good. That's for the best. Thank you. I wonder if that'll bite me in the bum later, that decision. Now then, Baron Fogel. Quickly though, I need to finish up here soon. He also mentioned that Father Matthias had a copy, and we're looking for another verified contents. Do you know anything about that book? I have heard of it, but I have never read it, and I know little about its contents. The subject is broad, but I believe the book deals specifically with the Roman occupation of this land. What about that could have upset Father Matthias so much? I can't claim any deep insights into the former abbot's mind. I understood him to be a a virtuous and charitable man, sometimes to a fault. It is not always best when Abbot considers himself a friend to his brothers instead of the shepherd. Could something in the book have led Father Matthias to a crisis of virtue? Virtue is only found in crisis. Without it, virtue is a little more than ideals. So, perhaps there is merit in that idea. Well, I must be off the mass. Thank you again for your help, Andres. Wait, how will you get to the church if you can't enter the scriptorium? I thought this was the only door into the library. We are standing in the oldest part of the abbey, and like any old place, it has a share of secrets. Good day, Andreas. God be with you. That's the bell for sext. The brothers will be sitting down for dinner soon. I should see if Otto is around and still wants to eat with me. I think he's working by the guest house below the abbey. Okay. Up below the Abbey. Guest house. Ah, alright. Okay, well I think I am going to... Yep, leave the game. Well, that was Chris from Round Table Cop. This is Pentiment, my first look. Thank you again to Xbox A and Z for the review key. You'll see my review up on roundtablecoop.com once the embargo lifts. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next playthrough.